Today, we're pleased to present Bus Priority in Motion, an implementation toolkit for bus priority in Metro Vancouver. My name's Molly, and I'll be presenting alongside Caroline with our audience, with uh, Shayoni and Alex, our team members in the audience. Buses are the workhorses of Metro Vancouver's transit system. During peak hours on Hastings Street, buses take up only 3% of the total vehicles in the street while moving a third of passengers through the, the corridor. Buses, however, when they're not prioritized based on this high efficiency, get stuck in the same congestion as private vehicles. Luckily, we have solutions. Bus priority measures are tools and techniques that reduce bus delay through physical separation, think bus lanes, operational solutions, or regulations on who can use certain lanes and when. While we have these solutions, street space is still highly contested and it impacts everybody. Implementing these solutions, now that's the challenge. In response, our group identified five key barriers to bus priority implementation. First, right of way, as in the physical space available on a street can be challenging to reallocate for bus priority. Right of way poses direct impacts on all the people who use the street, especially since the best bus priority measures take up significant amounts of space. Maintaining accesses, access to businesses and adjacent streets is an important function of many corridors. However, the turning movements and patterns that we prioritize have to be carefully balanced and evaluated in the context of the street, the volumes of buses using the street, and the intended users. Sometimes land acquisition is required in order to implement bus priority. Land acquisition poses a time money trade-off. Municipalities can opt to purchase the land now, which will be quite expensive, or they can wait to acquire the land through developer dedications, which may take time and policy direction, but is cost effective. The location of the corridor and strategic growth plans for the area will impact this decision. Transit signal priority is an operational solution that's effective for reducing bus delay at the intersection. However, it requires extensive collaboration between different jurisdictions and organizations, which can be complex. Finally, public communication is an opportunity to integrate local values and feedback into bus priority solutions, but it has to be done strategically and at the right time in order to avoid community backlash that can delay or even completely halt a bus priority project. So now I'm gonna give it over to Caroline who will explore how we can apply our barriers framework to a Metro Vancouver corridor. As Molly mentioned, since the bulk of our work involved a toolkit, we wanted to apply these findings to an existed, existing transit corridor in Metro Vancouver to understand how these barriers and solutions look like on the ground. We chose 152nd Street in Surrey as our example corridor for a variety of reasons, including a diversity of land use and development potential. It's not yet a rapid transit corridor, but will be in the near future. While 152nd Street is just one example of where we can apply our findings, it can be used as a lens in which to analyze bus priority across the region. We'll now take a closer look at two intersections that were part of our more detailed analysis. The first intersection is 152nd Street and 104th Avenue at the heart of Guilford Town Center. The location of this intersection makes for a busy, highly congested confluence of travel modes where buses face various challenges to speed and reliability. Linking back to our prior five barriers, right-of-way issues, impacts on access, and land acquisitions are all key barriers to implementing bus priority here. These barriers are directly tied to solutions such as road widening and other long-term municipal policy plans, such as the Guilford Town Center Plan. The second intersection is 152nd Street and Fraser Highway, part of the Fleetwood area in Surrey. In four years, this intersection will be home to a future SkyTrain station, which will be part of the Surrey-Langley SkyTrain extension, resulting in, in significant development and redevelopment in the 800 meters around the station. Similar to the first example, impacts on access and land acquisition are significant barriers to implementing bus priority. As this is a busy commercial and residential intersection, some solutions include business access transit lanes, as well as turn restrictions on vehicles turning left and right into commercial and residential driveways. The hope is that municipalities, transit authorities, developers, and anyone else reading our report will gain a better understanding of the barriers to bus priority implementation. Ideally, the strategic holistic thinking will lead to better bus priority projects that bring people together rather than apart and help buses move faster and more efficiently across Metro Vancouver. 
Thank you and a special thanks to our partners, Jim and David from HDR.